first, on behalf of the Farrell family, uh, obviously I'm Chris Chestnut and we represent the Farrell family in the civil case. Uh, obviously this is a, a tough day for us, it's a heavy day. We want to thank the citizens of Charlotte, we want to thank all the supporters who've come out today uh, to support Justin for Jonathan. Uh, today's outcome was not what we had hoped for, it's not what we expected, but it wasn't an acquittal either. And so we're standing here today in solidarity asking, expecting, praying, and hoping that justice will befall Jonathan Farrell, that there will be another trial, that more of the evidence that is there will be presented, yes, yes, and sir. that That's the right. jury, uh, after hearing all of the evidence, would be compelled for uh, a guilty verdict. What evidence was not presented, Mr. Chester? Uh, well, I think there, was, there, there were two things. The truth? First, first and foremost, uh, I think the, the, the video was mischaracterized, Mr. Strew. There's also video reenactment of Officer Kerry where he reenacts the shooting uh, days after the shooting that is wholly inconsistent with what happened on the video. So it goes to the credibility or lack thereof of Officer Kerry. The jury didn't see that. Um, so I think there were a number of things. There are other instances of evidence that the jury could have seen that they didn't that I think would have gone to the character of Mr. Uh, Carrick, especially considering that the defense uh, spent so much time trying to personalize him and, and portray him as a family man. And then also they played the race card. I mean, the defense, the right. defense counsel played the race card. They tried to put it on the prosecution, but they really did. And Jonathan Farrell was an all-American guy. He's black, white, Asian. He's an all-American guy. Mm -hmm. They played the race card. They tried to portray him as a black thug. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not consistent with his character. And so they were able to argue, consequently, make arguments that were not consistent with not only Jonathan's character, but weren't consistent with the evidence. Yes, I can. I felt that I got to keep fighting. We must get justice. Jonathan was an innocent bystander looking for help and kill. So we got to stop them from killing our children. That's right. Our understanding is that the vote was eight so to four for acquittal. Are you aware of that? Um, yes. Yeah, we, we are aware of a lot of things, but like my mother said, we must continue to fight. We will fight because Jonathan cannot do it because Jonathan was shot 10 times uh, unarmed. So we must fight uh, justice for Jonathan Farrell. Your family's been very respectful for all um, of Of course it's tough, but just like I said, when I, when I was younger, me and Jonathan made the promise to one another that we would fight for each other no matter what. We will always defend each other. So as my brother is dead in the grave right now, I'm defending him. I am walking for him. I am fighting for him day in and day out, trying to get justice for my brother. Are you guys Mr. Carroll, have you asked the prosecutors to, to retry? No, because we're um, not violent people. We're not worried about violence. The, the, violence people, the violence in Charlotte we're concerned about is Officer Carrick's violence. That's right. That's the that's violence that's we're concerned about. Our family, our family don't show Come violence. On, our family right. don't, our family's not nothing about violence. This entire time we've been up here, we always carried ourselves in the most, in the highest. We always, the person that we try to follow in the walk never was about violence. We're not about violence. We're not violent people. Everybody who walked with us and try to be represented with us is not about violence. That's we that. never once said nothing about violence. You have been very peaceful and your family's been very respectful. Tell us what message you Continue to pray, continue to fight the battle, continue to live and make sure that Jonathan Fair is not walking in your house, make sure he's not uh, eating at your table because Jonathan Fair is still living. Because there's a lot of innocent people, there's a lot of all American people. I am Jonathan Fair. All right. I am Jonathan Farrell. I am Jonathan Farrell. There's a lot of people. Like it was supposed to be manslaughter charges or murder charges. Uh, we, we, we leave that up to the uh, the lawyers and, and everybody else. God have control of all of that. God, no matter what nobody say, no matter what charges no one have. And the, un, un, a lot of stuff that people don't understand is your conscience is something serious. Yes, sir. Has That's the, something serious. Has the state given you any indication that they're willing to pursue this? Have you spoken to those prosecutors? No, we have spoke with them, and um, just like we tell you guys that we uh, will continue to sit and fight. We will let them take care of the business, and uh, we have all the everything taken care of because God has control of everything. And so you asked us, you asked us what we needed. You asked us what we need from the citizens of Charlotte, those who support us. We need you to petition uh, the Attorney General and keep the pressure on them to retry this case. 
um, because the resources are there, and so hopefully we won't hear an argument that there aren't sufficient resources to try this case again. There was well, not an acquittal. It. it was a hung jury. The case needs to be tried again until either there is a guilty verdict That's or right. an acquittal. That's so this right. case has to be tried again. We need the citizens to support us in that. You have a First Amendment right to write letters, to make calls, uh, engage civically. It does not require violence, but certainly you have a voice and it needs to be spoken. Because listen, yes, this, this was Jonathan Farrell, but yes, he was unarmed. And there are a lot of unarmed men of every color walking around the city of Charlotte. Yes, and if this behavior is tolerated, there may be a lot of other victims. It sounds like you got the indication that they are not going to pursue a second trial. Is that true? We certainly haven't gotten an answer. Uh, so, you know, we've asked for they, a they, commitment to have a second trial. What did they say when you asked for their commitment? They don't know. Did they tell you which way the jury was leaving? No, we haven't seen a, an official tap of uh, the, the jurors. It was 84. Video evidence wasn't included. Would you like to see a new team prosecute Mr. Carrick? Absolutely. We want to see all the evidence. We want the jury to see all the evidence. And I think that this is a very unique case. Um, and it takes an aggressive team. So if perhaps we need some folks from Washington, D.C., from the federal government to come down and try the case, whoever can get the conviction, whoever can, can, uh, can present all of the evidence. Um, and this prosecution team did a, did a, a, a decent job. Yes, uh, the, yes, the, the resources to them, I think, were limited. I don't think they had all the resources they needed. But what I do know is that the jury did not see all the evidence. And I think if they had, that the vote would have been different. You sat there every day. What do you think eight people did not get, did not hear that you think in another trial they would get or hear with a different outcome? What do you think after you sat there day in and day out? What do you think eight people were not convinced of? We have no clue. We cannot think for eight people. We cannot think for 12 people. We only can think for ourselves and continue to hope that everybody think positive and uh, along this way. And then we pray that we get this retrial and we pray that everything stay peaceful. And we pray that everybody continue to live the life and not have to be shot 12 times, shot at 12 times, and be shot 10 times searching for help. Has anybody, has anybody from the Carrick side uh, reached out to you at all since this, or have you reached out to them, or did you say anything to them after this? After we pray for them every night. We, we reach pray out for, for them, them, but they never reach That's out. That's reaching out. Praying for somebody that's reaching out. And you know, kind of what's shocking, what's shocking, what's shocking is the lack of remorse. I mean, we, we have not seen the lack of uh, a remorse from the Karen family. Um, and certainly we've always been respectful and deferential to them. Ms. Farrell has always prayed for Officer Carrick. Sure doesn't seem like he was praying for us. Um, and so the lack of remorse is concerning, um, especially that this is a sworn officer who was sworn to keep the peace, to support the citizenry. He's killed an unarmed citizen and yet still does not have remorse for the family. It's concerning that he could have such a demeanor given the circumstances. Sir, so as a mother sitting through all this and seeing the pictures, you said you feel you could sit through this again. You feel like you absolutely would sit through this again. Where does this go for your family now? You're sitting and waiting. We're going to continue to fight for Jonathan. Justice for Jonathan. Continue to fight, continue to pray. Um, this is something that we will we'll do until everything gets taken care of. But before we leave, we would like to thank the city of Charlotte. We would like to thank all the supporters, everybody right. who's been uh, covering the case, everybody that's been helping, everybody that's been praying around the country, around the world, who's been sending me all the uh, positive and negative things that let people let me know that people is uh, attracted to Jonathan and that let me know that Jonathan case is being heard. And um, yes. everybody, please continue uh, to not promote violence because our family is not violent. Jonathan was not violent. Um, thank everybody. God you bless you. Let's send a retrial. Okay, let me decide. Hey, Willie.